fascinating dynamic that's currently happening with the commanders. Chris Sims' opinion has been for weeks now, since studying the film of all the top quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, no-brainer, number one. Jaden Daniels, in Chris's opinion, no-brainer, number two. Sprint to the podium with the card if you're the commanders with the second pick in the draft. Well, it's not clear what they're going to do. And I'm developing a sense as I talk to people who are in a position to have reason to know what's going to happen. Right? They, as Bill Belichick said earlier this week on McAfee's show, the teams aren't really talking this time of year. But there are some people involved in the broader process. The agents need to be able to set the expectations of their clients. That's the most important thing you can do as an agent when the draft approaches. You need to give your client the high and the low. And you better be right on the low, because mm-hmm. if they go lower than the low, you're fired. Or mm-hmm. at a minimum, you got a lot of work to do to get yourself back in the good graces of this premier client that you think is going to be a generator of fees for you for the next 10 years. So they get the information and then the challenges, talking to the right ones. And after 23 years, I know who to trust. I know who not to trust. So I started working the phones after what's happened this week with the commanders. And just to summarize, and we'll talk more about this later, we'll get their response later. We're going to give them equal time. But where it got weird was when they brought in four top prospects on the same day. Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr., all on the same day. Sims and I reacted to that without really talking about it in advance. We were both just like on the show, like this is kind of weird. And I get it that, well, well, you bring in a bunch of, and we'll, we'll hear their explanation later. But the Belichick explanation from McAfee show was, well, we did this all the time. I don't think you do it with quarterback prospects, top of the draft, when this is your most important decision as an organization to make since they traded up to get Robert Griffin. And before that, it was the ill-fated Heath Schuler experiment in 1994. This is a critical, critical pick. And I think it's imperative to bring these guys in one at a time, know everything you can about them, get them all in with you. And that's where this has kind of gone off the rails for the commanders. Because I'm hearing belief that maybe Jaden Daniels isn't all that interested now in going to the commanders. I don't know if he was before, but this has kind of brought it to a head. And the agent post on X with the clip of Chris and and I talking about this strange dynamic of bringing in the top four prospects at the same time the agent did the the hmm the pensive hmm emoji that has sparked plenty of talk plenty of speculation and oh plenty of movement of the betting odds Jaden Daniels on Tuesday was the clear favorite to be the second overall pick in the draft now it is even it is identical Between him and Drake May. At DraftKings, they're both minus 115. At FanDuel, they're both minus 110. Oh, can't mention FanDuel. At the other major sports book, they're still minus one. They're they're even at minus 110. So something's going on here. And the options are very simple for the commanders. At two, take Daniels, take someone else, or trade out of the pick. And more and more people are starting to guess, starting to believe, starting to think they're not going to take Daniels at two. So either they take May at two or they trade out of that spot and try to get May later. That That is starting to emerge, Miles, as a very real possibility for six days from now. Well, that would certainly be interesting. I mean, it, 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 especially when Peters is saying, yeah, no, we're, we're good at two, you know. And you, you'd think – that if a team needs a quarterback and they are in position to have their pick of whoever they want, aside from Caleb Williams, then you're, you're inclined, let's say to stay there and get your quarterback and and don't bleep around with it because you don't know what's going to happen. If you trade down, whether it's one spot or two spots or maybe more spots than that, um, because there is so much more uncertainty there, right? I mean, if you trade out, and then somebody picks the quarterback that you actually wanted, then you're kind of up a Creek without a paddle. And like, what, what exactly are you doing there? But you know, that's the interesting thing about this. You know, I, I just, if I'm the commanders, 
I would do what Adam Peters said he's going to do, not be inclined to trade out of number two overall and just pick the guy that I want. Because, yeah, you can pick up another asset, but is that going to be worth it if you're playing games and you don't get the exact quarterback that you ostensibly have fallen in love with throughout this draft process? To me, it, it, that would not make much sense. But there are a lot of things about the way the commanders have gone about, let's call it the last week, that have not made much sense to me. Well, and here's the other dynamic. This is the other thing that I've picked up from somebody that I trust immensely, who is very plugged into the ownership scene. Josh Harris, a lot more involved than they thought he'd be. And the only explanation that makes sense to me and everybody in the broader league structure with you know teams and agents, et cetera, that I've spoken to about this, I've said, hey, this is my theory, and it's good. I'm proud of it. Like, hey, I finally thought of something, so I'm running it by everyone. And unless they're just humoring me, which is entirely possible, everyone's like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. They brought them all in on the same day because that's the day that Mr. Harris was available to see them. That's the yeah. only plausible explanation for having them there. We'll hear their explanation coming up, but I reject it. The only plausible explanation is that's when the guy who owns the team, who understands the gravity of this decision, would be there. He's signing off on this. And here's the danger. This is the David Tepper danger, not not the splash zone if you're close to him when he's throwing a drink. This is when the owner is involved in any way. It takes, I believe, a significant degree of restraint because the people who work for you are paying attention to everything you say, everything you do, every question you ask, every comment you make is a potential sign as to which of these guys you want. Because at the end of the day, if you get it wrong, it's better to get it wrong with the guy the boss wanted. It's Your worst case scenario is the boss wanted this guy and you went with that guy and that guy stinks and the other guy's good and that's the guy the boss wanted. Your long-term job prospects are far better suited by giving the boss what you think the boss wants. And it all comes down to how vocal the boss is. But unless the boss is completely flatlined vanilla, somebody's going to make a guess as to which guy. You can just tell. When you've got four different people that you're considering for a job and you're, you're, you're meeting with them, you're having dinner with them, a human being cannot hide his or her preferences or not from among these people it's going to come out at some point something is going to be said at some point that reveals which one the person who owns the business likes and and so you know will that be the justification to move away from Jaden Daniels toward a Drake May or will they try to do the thing where they they trade down and still get their guy I don't think Josh Harris is going to want to play that game I think Josh Harris is going to want somebody. There's a chance it's not going to be Jaden Daniels, and they're just going to take that, and they're not going to get cute. They're not going to get smart. They're not going to outsmart themselves and end up not getting the guy they want or the guy the boss wants. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's the, oh, won't someone rid me of this meddlesome priest thing come to life? And you don't even have to be that you know, passive aggressive about it. I mean, it's especially if you're in a group setting. I mean, there's body language, Mr. Body language expert. There's yeah. who is Smile, the boss yeah. interacting with yeah. the most? Who does he gravitate toward? Who does he have the, the biggest smile on his face when he's talking to? I mean, they, there are absolute tells that you can use in order to discern who it is that your boss likes in that kind of setting. Absolutely. That's that great Michael Scott gif where he leans forward with his hands under his chin. Yeah. Like if the boss <laughs> is reacting that way, whenever Drake May talks or whenever JJ McCarthy talks or whenever Michael <laughs> Penix talks, like that's going to tell you yeah. this is the one the boss likes. So uh, that that's part of this. And I think we were saying yesterday that you've got so many different cooks involved with the commanders. It makes it easier for the head chef to be in charge. Because there's too many other people. It's too diluted. It's not like Adam Peters has been given the keys to the organization. You've got Bob Myers involved. You've got Magic Johnson who's got a seat at the table and he's involved and he's he's got something to say. And you've got, you know, your other executives who are there. And you've got just a lot of people involved in this process. 
And I think that puts greater emphasis on ownership. Something else I heard yesterday. And I struggle with this because there is a disconnect between what you will write as a report and what you'll say in a setting like this as just kind of, a, hey, you know, this is something to maybe keep an eye on. And maybe I'll write something about it. And I'm going to couch this as keep an eye on. Okay. Just keep an eye on the Raiders for Jaden Daniels. Mm. Keep an eye on the Raiders. Okay. There's a history with him and Antonio Pierce. I don't know if yeah. Pierce tried to get him to Arizona State at some point. I need to do my research on what the connection is there. But keep an eye on the Raiders. From both perspectives, Jaden Daniels wants the Raiders, and the Raiders want Jaden Daniels. Keep an eye on that. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying keep an eye on it. And, you know, there's also some speculation. When these crazy, unexpected things happen, there's some speculation that maybe, you know, Jaden Daniels, whether it was deliberate or just he wasn't thrilled with this idea that everybody says I'm the number two pick in the draft. Why am I here with three other quarterbacks? You should be selling yourself on me. You should be making me want to be here. And I've got to spend the day with this group of quarterbacks and only one of us is going to come here. What, what are you doing? There may have been, you know, not the usual earnestness you would see from somebody who's like, oh, please hire me, please hire me, please hire me. So, you know, if the other ones are acting that way and Jaden Daniels isn't, then maybe Josh Harris isn't going like that, isn't doing the Michael Scott thing when <laughs> Jaden Daniels speaks because Jaden Daniels is like not, he's not feeling it. And, and why would you? You are the number two guy. The people who know what they're doing have Jaden Daniels as the clear number two guy. So when you have your visit to this team that wants you, supposedly, and you should ideally want them, and the day is diluted by the other three quarterbacks being there, at some level, you are going to be pissed. And when your agent posts that, that emoji of the guy thinking about something in response to the clip of Chris and me talking about the you know, how, how it doesn't make any sense that they did this. Yeah, there's there's red flags there. And uh, and it all flows back to how the commanders have handled it. It's not anything about Jaden Daniels. It's how the commanders have right. handled Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels may just not want to go there now. Well, I, Mike, I mean, it comes off to me as a little bit disrespectful. You know, when you are a quarterback and you are going to be the leader of a franchise... You know, you're basically competing to be the number two overall pick. And, you know, for whatever reason, the franchise wants to have all four of you guys in on the same day. I mean, how are you really going to get to know somebody and get to know whether or not they are right for you if you are competing with other quarterbacks in a way that you never would in any other situation? It just, it, I, I don't know. I mean, as you were saying, it doesn't really make sense. I kind of think of it as a little bit disrespectful. I mean, I can tell you when the Rams traded up to number one overall in 2016, I was working for the team at the time, and they brought in Jared Goff, and they also brought in Carson Wentz on very separate days, right? I think it was the same week, but, you know, you had separate but equal time with both of those guys separately so that you can understand who they are. Because if you are a quarterback and you've got this other guy in the same room with you, I don't know how that you can really be yourself and the leader that you actually are. You know, because you there are no two quarterbacks on the field at the same time, right? If you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any. So, yeah, the whole approach does not really make sense to me. And so, you know, when because usually you have the guy in, you take him on the board, you bring him out to dinner. Maybe that's when he has dinner with the owner. And then at that point in 2016, we did something with the internal media content team. And I got to talk to Goff and Wentz and all that stuff. So, like, this is where I'm just I'm confused by this and I'm confused by this approach. You mentioned the phrase equal time earlier. Let's give the commanders equal time, not second for second, minute for minute. Let's just hear what they had to say. This is Adam Peters and assistant GM Lance Newmark on the decision to bring in four of the top quarterbacks on the same day. 
with all these guys, they all know each other really well. And so what, what was cool is while we got to see them all together in a group setting at, at the Top Golf, which was really fun, and I think everybody had a, a great time, and it was very beneficial to see everybody in a more relaxed environment. They all got a lot of time individually with, with their coaches with us, you know, where they were staggered coming in too. So it wasn't like they were sitting in a room together. They all had their own individual time with everybody. So it worked out really well. And then you got a great blend of that and then, and then working uh, everybody together, you know, in, in a fun environment. Yeah, this is the first time um, that I've been a part of doing it with a huge group of players together at once. And um, I thought it was a really cool dynamic seeing like the organic like how guys came together, um, you know, how magnetic certain individuals were versus others. Um, just that loose kind of casual feel for, from the one night to the next day where it was more individualized the next day. So I really thought it was a great experience because you see guy, how guys are in a group, you see, and then you, you spend time with them individually as well. So um, I came away from it very impressed with the process and um, I just thought it was a very positive overall experience. Isn't it funny that there's been so much pushback to our take that this was a weird thing to do with all these people saying, oh, they do it all the time. They do it all the time. And the assistant GM says, I've never been involved with that before. So, hmm. <laughs> yeah, they do it all the time. They do it all the time. I, To me, at a certain level, I, I'm firmly on record as not being a big fan of the concept of the draft. I understand the draft itself is a big deal. Oh, we cover we it. Go. We love it. It's the Harry Potter sorting hat. But at the same time, you know, it's, there it is. Psh, we love the draft. We got the countdown clock that comes up right away. <laughs> but, but here's what this is. The commanders have one chance to get the quarterback that's going to transform the franchise. And this is the strategy they've concocted to try to differentiate one from the other. And we're allowed to think it doesn't make sense just because yes. people know X's and O's. I mean, I know people. I'm a student of the human condition. And I think <laughs> I think you use the word disrespectful. I, I it's did disrespectful. Use that word, yes. It's disrespectful it to all of them. It's like it's like. They're lab rats in a weird sort of way, like we've got here. Here's yes. what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Yes. We've got these four guys, and we got to pick one of them. Let's just put them in a room together and see how they act. Maybe they'll, right. maybe, maybe, maybe one will kill the other three, and that will clearly be the right choice for us. Be the only choice yes. at that point. But there's an there's an element of evil scientist that comes through this. That just it it's off putting to me as an outsider. So it would definitely piss me off if I was one of the four kids or their agents to go through this, especially if I'm the guy that everybody says is the second best player in the draft. And I got to go through this, this weird power trip bullshit. Oh, there it is. 8, 10 a.m. So, yeah, there's, it's, just, it's, it's just weird. And it's disrespectful, particularly to the guy who is kind of the consensus number two player in the draft. Uh, frankly, I think it's disrespectful to all four of them. I mean, this, what they described sounds like an alpha test. All right. Like we're okay. We're going to go to top golf and we got all these other p prospects here. It's not just the quarterbacks. It's all these other, and we want to see who the most magnetic personality is. That's yeah. So we, once we see who the magnetic personality is, oh, our guys gravitating toward this guy or the other guy, it's like the freaking draft day. Well, why, why didn't they go to his birthday party? Yeah. Oh my gosh. At top golf. Why didn't anybody hang out with this guy? Well, they were hanging out with the other guy. Oh, well, if that's the case, then that's the guy we should pick. I mean, what kind of alpha test is that? That's BS. I mean, if everybody is supposed to coalesce around the quarterback and you are basically saying, well, we're going to give you four quarterbacks, little mice, well, which quarterback do you actually like? I mean, or is it like bees, you know, where there's the one queen, right? And you've got all these different bees. Who's going to gravitate toward the one queen bee? I don't know who it's going to. I mean, like, this is weird. This is like, this is not the normal process of stuff. And maybe thinking outside the box is going to work for the commanders. But I, I, if I were one of those four and it's like, okay, I'm going into what's effectively a cage match with these other quarterbacks and I need to show I'm more magnetic. 
right? I need to show that I'm the better leader at freaking top golf of all places as, you know, people may, maybe they want to gravitate toward me. Like that's, I, is that really something that should be in a pre-draft process? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't love that, Mike. I really don't. To use your B analogy, it's four queen bees. Yes. They're never going to be together again. Ever. They're never going to be in the same, unless they're on the same Pro Bowl roster, or or right. we get to a point where, you know, one fails and he's the backup to one of the other ones. That's exactly. possible as well, and that's probably happened. I mean, Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold were together in Carolina after they were, you know, maybe put through those same paces somewhere. But it, it's just odd. And there's a fine line between outside the box and effing nutty. And, yeah. and, and you know what, if you want, look, here's the other, here's the other part of it too, that bothers me. Are they all golfers? Cause let me tell you something you take, <laughs> I mean, you take someone to top golf. that's never golfed. Here's a club. Go have fun. You introduce yeah. an entirely new level of stress into the event. Yes. It's not relaxed yeah. at that point. Hey, you're it's up. Not. Hey, Michael, you're up. Let's see what you can do. Oh, they don't have left-handed clubs. Make do with the right-handed clubs. Go. And, I mean, you. and so you're under scrutiny. I don't know. Maybe they intended that. Maybe they picked Top Golf because, ooh, we'll see how they do when it's their chance to step right up, even if they've never golfed before. And maybe they determined in advance they all did. I don't know. But it's just, if you want to, I'm a firm believer that the best way to get an insight into someone's true character, especially at that age. There's two ways to do it. Number one, from the person, the low-level grunt that picks him up at the airport and takes him to the facility. How did the, the player interact? Because no one that age understands that anything you say to the person who drives you to the facility can and will be used against you as part of the effort to decide, are you a good person? Are you a bad person? Are you nice? Are you an asshole? Whatever. Sorry. The other thing, too, is you take him to dinner. Watching how someone deals with that basic social setting of we're going to eat and there's a waiter or a waitress and there's different people that come to the table. How do they interact with those people? How do they treat everyone they come in contact with? I think, to me, that's far more revealing than creating this bizarre power-driven laboratory experiment where we're going to see how the four alphas interact with each other. I don't know. I, I, yeah. Oh, and, and the commanders fans are going to be like, you hate the, you're just looking for a reason to hate the commanders. No, I'm, I'm, I see something weird and I'm going to say it's weird. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is sometimes things are outside the box because that's where they're supposed to be. This to me <laughs> seems like one of these things that's outside the box. And it should stay the hell there. What's I, in the I box? What's yeah. in the box? <laughs> I don't know. Mike, right. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. But like this, I, yeah, it, it, I don't think I would have dealt with this very well if I were one of those four we quarterbacks. Ta- we we got to take a break. But the biggest concern I would have if I'm a commander's fan is that Josh Harris is going to find a way to put his thumb on the scale and whether he does it intentionally or not. And will Adam Peters have strength of his convictions to go with the guy that he believes will be most likely the franchise quarterback they desperately need, or will he try to placate Josh Harris? And, you know, what kind of a bet are you willing to make with your future? That's what it comes down to. Am I willing to make the bet that I'm going to pick the right guy? And Josh Harris is going to say to me, hey, boy, I'm glad you didn't listen to me. Or am I going to be the guy who takes the even safer course potentially and and give the guy to the boss that the boss wants. And then if it's wrong, hey, hey boss, that's who you wanted. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.